Ever since The Walking Dead first aired in 2010, the creative minds at AMC had been quietly sowing seeds that connected the zombie series with another AMC success story, Breaking Bad. So, what does Walter White's meth-infused power trip have to do with surviving the end of the world? Ever since the spin-off series of Fear the Walking Dead arrived on the scene, it's been clear that the Walking Dead universe was more than just a single show set between Atlanta and Washington, D.C. This was confirmed when AMC Network CEO Josh Sapan announced in early September 2018 that the folks at AMC had plans for the universe that extended, quote, over the next decade plus. While this may have seemed odd in the shadow of the show's faltering ratings at the time, it kind of makes sense. The idea of a long-term goal that spans beyond the scope of a single film or series is par for the course in Hollywood. Cross-pollinating universes is totally in these days, so a connection between AMC shows is hardly surprising. What's a bit more interesting, though, is the not-quite-confirmed larger crossover that integrates Breaking Bad into the Walking Dead universe, a phenomenon fondly nicknamed the Breaking Dead Theory. It's been loosely confirmed by showrunner Dave Erickson, and here's the skinny on how the two shows line up. It didn't take long for The Walking Dead to start incorporating elements of their runaway hit Breaking Bad into their fledgling zombie apocalypse series. In the second episode in Season 2, Daryl Dixon can be seen rifling through a clear bag. The contents comprise his brother Merle's stash, most of which is in pill bottles. However, tucked at the bottom of the bag is a hefty dose of some blue crystals. The shot immediately grabs your attention as Daryl casually lists crystal among the gathered narcotics. Of course, the prize for the most famous blue crystals in history has to go to Mr. White's Sky Blue. By the end of Breaking Bad, the stuff was sought after all over the world, so its presence in Georgia wouldn't be particularly odd. The connection hung there for a bit until none other than Walking Dead creator Robert Kirkman confirmed that the Easter egg was there on purpose. It ain't cloudy or dirty or nothing, just the right shade of blue. Another possible link that was picked up on in The Walking Dead Season 4 episode, Still, involved Walter White's associate, Mr. Jesse Pinkman. This one came during that chunk of time when Daryl and Beth were romping around the countryside, surviving, being moody, and bonding like a couple of cute misfits. In one scene, Daryl tells a story about his brother Merle before everything went south. And Merle had this dealer, this janky little white guy, Tweaker. Fans were quick to jump on the description as fitting Pinkman rather neatly. The speculation became more intriguing a little further into the story when Daryl explained an altercation with the fellow in question. He pulls a gun, sticks it right here. I said, I'm gonna kill you. Between the description and that line, it's hard not to start drawing a connection. Did Merle work for the nefarious Jesse Pinkman once upon a time? Perhaps. Although, at another point in the story, Daryl refers to the guy's kids. Guess we'll never know. Another Easter egg appeared during Season 3 of Fear the Walking Dead, hidden in plain sight. As the group entered a bustling bazaar, a song could be heard blaring over the radio. It was in Spanish, and to an uninformed viewer did little more than add a mariachi-style splash of color to the scene. However, for those intimately acquainted with Walter White's tragic story arc, the song had a much deeper meaning and an undeniable connection to the Breaking Bad universe. We're talking about Negro y Azul, the Ballad of Heisenberg. The song appeared as a cold open in Breaking Bad and is written about Walter White, aka Heisenberg, chronicling his rise to power against established drug cartels and predicting his eventual demise. The song is clearly specific to Breaking Bad, and its appearance on Fear the Walking Dead was a clear shout-out to the connection that the shows share. Showrunner Erickson was referring to this scene in particular when he confirmed that the nod was intentional, adding more cargo to the runaway train that is the Breaking Dead theory. In Season 4, as he continues to break bad, Walter White has a growing infatuation with indulging his reckless nature. Instead of returning a car for an exorbitant restocking fee, for instance, White simply blows it up. And what about that car? A 2009 Dodge Challenger, red with a double black racing stripe straight down the center. That is, until it was blown to smithereens. And it wasn't the last time one of these cars would appear on an AMC show. Fast forward to exactly one apocalypse later. In the first season of The Walking Dead, another challenger makes an appearance, this time roaming the streets of Atlanta. The car in question is, once again, a 2009 model. 
Some have taken a gigantic leap, assuming that the mysterious Glenn who sold Walter the car in New Mexico was none other than Glenn Ree, who fixed it up and drove it to Georgia. A more reasonable explanation might be that Glenn Ree, the car salesman, was simply infatuated with that model. Either way, this nod from the new show to the old seems clearly intended. While the little Breaking Bad Easter eggs sprinkled throughout the Walking Dead universe are fun to point out, the real heart and soul of the Breaking Dead theory actually rests on a crossover that's even more sinister. It suggests that Blue Sky doesn't merely link the two worlds, but that it's the cause of the zombie apocalypse. While the theory hasn't been made official in any formal way, it also hasn't been denied by the creators of either show. On the contrary, they've stoked the fires. Walking Dead creator Robert Kirkman said, albeit a bit tongue-in-cheek, quote, "...that's canon. It's confirmed." Producer Gail Ann Hurd, when responding to the question of what caused the virus, stated flatly, quote, "...the meth from Breaking Bad, for sure." On the other side of the aisle, Breaking Bad's Vince Gilligan responded to the speculation by saying, "...I love that theory. That was a kick. They're two great shows, The Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead." Brian Cranston added, Walt is dead, so he could be a zombie right now. Heisenberg zombie. Gale was a pretty sweet character on Breaking Bad. He was one of the few people who could rival White's scientific prowess, and he could brew some darn good coffee. In fact, the man had turned the latter into a science project with an elaborate machine that took volume, temperature, acidity, and tannins all into account in the pursuit of brewing the perfect cup. My God, that is the best coffee I've ever tasted. While his death may have left the Breaking Bad crew with cups of Folgers sludge, it appears it wasn't the last time the scientist's magically caffeine-infused machine was used. In the third episode of Season 3 on The Walking Dead, Merle, the governor, and Milton all gather in his lab. While they're talking, in the background is none other than Gale's coffee machine. The question is, how did it get there? This tie-in between Breaking Bad and The Walking Dead goes back further than you might think. Season 9 of The Walking Dead didn't just see the departure of characters like Rick Grimes, it also saw the introduction of the Whisperers. In Episode 10, we saw a great deal of their leader Alpha's backstory through the testimony of her daughter, Lydia. During those scenes, both of Lydia's parents are seen singing. Lydia, oh Lydia, say The tune is fitting for the scene as the girl looks for solace amidst the horrors of the end of the world, but it wasn't just a well-placed musical number. It also, of course, harkened back to Breaking Bad. In the waning moments of Breaking Bad's last episode, Walter White stands in the midst of the carnage he's created in his final act of vengeance. As he parts ways with Jesse Pinkman for the last time, a cell phone starts to ring on the lifeless body of Todd that lies in front of him. The tune on the cell? Lydia, the tattooed lady. It added an abrupt splash of color to the series' swan song as White picked up and informed yet another Lydia on the other end of the call that her death was imminent. The connections between AMC's two monumental worlds are too numerous to deny, and yet the creators of both series have yet to openly steer into the skid. Walter White's world has continued on in the form of Better Call Saul and the full-length feature El Camino released in 2019. In addition, The Walking Dead has Fear the Walking Dead, a triple header of films in the works, and several more confirmed Walking Dead series. With all the material being produced, a marriage of the two universes could be a match made in heaven. After all, Breaking Bad hardly closed up shop before it became one of the cult classics of our time, and the fandom still surrounding The Walking Dead could continue breathing life into this beloved world of the dead for years years to come. Check out one of our newest videos right here, plus even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.